In the first case, we are having two voltage sources and the first source is providing the voltage V1 and the second source is providing the voltage V2. Now when you look at the connection, you will find they are connected in series with the polarity minus plus minus plus. So here in this case, when we move in the same direction, we are going to get the same pattern of the polarity. For example, let's move from bottom to top, we will have the polarity minus plus minus plus, the same pattern. And when we move from top to bottom, we are going to get the polarity plus minus plus minus, again the same pattern. And let's say the potential difference between this terminal and this terminal is equal to V volts. This implies the voltage across these two terminals is equal to V volts. And now we will apply KVL and from KVL we will have plus V2 plus V1 then we have minus V equal to 0. From here we can calculate V voltage V is equal to V1 plus V2. So V is equal to V1 plus V2. So V1 plus V2 is the voltage or potential difference across these two terminals and therefore there is no need to have two different sources providing voltage V1 and voltage V2 separately. We can have a single voltage source providing V1 plus V2 with polarity as plus minus plus minus. So this one is the equivalent of this one. And whenever you solve a network and have this kind of arrangement, you can replace it by this one. And this will help you simplify the circuit. So remember this particular simplification and now we will move on to the second case in which again we have two voltage sources. First source is giving us V1, second source is giving us V2 and they are connected in series with polarity plus minus minus plus. So this time when we move from bottom to up we have plus minus minus plus polarity. This means polarity is not having the same pattern but it is getting reversed. When we move from top to bottom we have plus minus minus plus. Again the polarity is reversed and let's say the voltage across the two terminals is equal to V volts. Now apply KVL you will have minus V2 plus V1 minus V equal to 0. This will give us V equal to V1 minus V2. So V is equal to V1 minus V2 and therefore we will replace this by a single source providing voltage V1 minus V2 and the polarity will be plus minus plus minus. The polarity we have assumed initially will be the polarity of the source we are having here. Now depending on the values of V1 and V2, V can be positive, V can be negative or V can be zero and V will be positive when V1 is greater than V2. This will happen when the value of V1 is greater than the value of V2. And when this happens, we can say that our assumption is true. Why? Because we assumed this particular terminal is at the higher potential as compared to this terminal. And this terminal is getting influenced by the positive terminal of V1 and the negative terminal of V2. And this terminal is influenced by the negative terminal of V1 and the positive terminal of V2. And finally, we are getting this terminal as positive. This means the positive terminal of V1 is more dominant than the negative terminal of V2. And this will happen when V1 is greater than V2. Similarly, this terminal will be negative terminal and this implies the negative terminal of V1 is more dominant than the positive terminal of V2 
and again the same thing is implied by this v1 is greater than v2 so our assumption of taking this as positive and this as negative is true when v is equal to a positive value now when v is equal to some negative value this implies value of v1 is less than the value of v2 our assumption is not true why because we will have more influence of v2 as compared to v1 therefore negative terminal of v2 will influence this terminal more as compared to the positive terminal of v1 therefore this terminal will be negative and similarly this terminal will be positive but we assumed this to be positive and this to be negative and that's why we are getting v to be negative now you are having two options either you can write down the negative value of v for example minus 5 volts and keep the same polarity the assumed polarity or you can write it as positive but change the polarity reverse it minus plus and the third case when v is equal to 0 will occur when v1 is equal to v2 so this is all about the second case this particular model is the equivalent model of this one and we will replace this arrangement by this while solving the questions now we will move on to the third case and in the third case we are having two voltage sources connected in parallel and the voltage provided by the first source is equal to v1 and the voltage provided by the second source is equal to v2 and the polarity you can see now let's say this point here is having the potential equal to 0 volt and therefore this point will also have the potential equal to 0 volt as well as this point will have the potential equal to 0 volt now we know that the potential difference that is v1 will be equal to the high potential minus the low potential therefore we can write v1 equal to the potential at this point let's call it v1 dash minus the low potential that is 0 volt so we have v1 dash equal to v1 so potential at this point will be equal to v1 similarly potential at this point will be equal to v2 but this point and this point will have the same potential there is no resistance in between to introduce the voltage drop so there is no voltage drop and hence v1 will be equal to v2 and also potential at this point will be same as v1 and v2 let's call it v so v is equal to v1 and v2 and finally we can say that the potential difference between the two terminals is equal to v equal to v1 equal to v2 and therefore there is no need of two different sources providing v1 and v2 we can have a single source providing v with this polarity plus minus plus minus so this model is the equivalent model of this one and while solving the networks we will replace this arrangement by a single source providing the voltage equal to v1 or v2 and now we will move on to the fourth case and in this case we have a voltage source providing the voltage equal to V connected in parallel with a resistance having the value equal to R. Now if this point is having the potential equal to 0 volt here we will have the potential equal to V volts and therefore here also the potential will be V volts here also the potential will be V volts here we will have zero volt potential here we will have zero volt potential and therefore there is no need of connecting this resistance we can remove it so the equivalent model will only have the voltage source providing the voltage v with the same polarity but you have to be very cautious while using this model because we can perform this simplification only while calculating the parameters on the load side 
we cannot perform the simplification while performing the calculations for the source side so this is one important condition in this fourth case i will give you one example after some time but for now just remember that whenever you have to perform the calculations on the load side then you can have the simplification you can remove the resistance connected in parallel but when you have to perform the calculations on the source side then you cannot remove this resistance the fifth case is similar to the fourth case instead of having the resistance we have a current source and we can remove this current source and have the voltage source only like here we have done but this particular conversion is done only when we are performing the calculations for the load side whenever we perform the calculations for the source side we do not do this conversion now to understand this point i have taken one example in this example we are having this network and the voltage source is there which is connected in parallel with this resistance the voltage source is providing the voltage equal to 100 volts and this resistance is having the value 10 ohms this resistance is having the value 5 ohms and this one here is having the value 5 ohms and this resistance is our load resistance and we are required to calculate the load current IL the current flowing through the resistance which is the load resistance VL the load voltage that is the voltage across the load resistance and also we will calculate the source current IS it is very easy to calculate IS IL and VL we know how to do it and even if you don't know in the coming lectures I will explain everything but for now I will directly write down the values when you calculate the source current IS you will find it is equal to 20 amperes and the power at the source is equal to 2 kilowatts and the load current after calculation will be equal to 10 amperes and the load voltage VL will be equal to 50 volts now when you remove this resistance following this particular conversion you will have the source current IS equal to 10 amperes all the values are same voltage is equal to 100 volts here this resistance is now open circuited we have removed it this resistance is having the value 5 ohms this one is also having the value 5 ohms IS is the source current IL is the load current and VL is the load voltage now in this case when you calculate IS you will find it is equal to 10 amperes and the source power is equal to 1 kilowatts and when you calculate the load current IL you will find it is equal to 10 amperes and the load voltage is equal to 50 volts so on comparison you can notice that IS was initially equal to 20 amperes but now it is 10 amperes so IS is now changed and also as IS is changed the power at the source PS will be different 20 kilowatt initially but here we have 1 kilowatt so while performing the calculations on the source side we cannot remove the resistance connected in parallel with the voltage source but if we are performing the calculations on the load side we can remove it because even after removing it you can see that the load current is 10 amperes the same and the load voltage is 50 volts the same so i hope you now understand how to deal with the fourth and the fifth simplifications and this is all for this lecture i will end it here see you in the next one